Welcome to the latest episode of Beatin' and Bangin'. I'm your host, Kyle Dalton. Today's video is full of stories from the weekend's races at Homestead, including one from each series. So let's not waste any time and get started. We'll begin with Saturday's Truck Series race and what was, once again, a terrifying moment on Pitt Road. If you'll recall, the last time the trucks were making laps was a few weeks ago at Talladega. During that race, Zane Smith overcooked it coming into his pits and his tire carrier, Charles Plank, was hit by the rear of the truck, which sent him flying into the air. Thankfully, Plank landed on his feet and wasn't seriously injured. He stayed on pit road and actually pitted for college racing in the Cup Series race the next day. This past weekend at Homestead, Corey Selig wasn't so lucky. He was the front tire carrier working with the number 33 truck for Rion Brothers Racing and driver Memphis Villarreal. Late in the second stage, the 21-year-old driver entered his pit box too fast, and Selig never had a chance. Holding both tires in his hands, he took a direct hit off the front bumper, which incredibly sent him flying through the air and over the pit wall. The AMR safety crew quickly responded, and Selig was eventually taken to Jackson South Medical Center, where he stayed the night and was diagnosed with a fractured sternum and several fractured ribs, according to a team statement. There hasn't been any further word on his condition or if he was released, but I speak for everyone in hoping Mr. Selig a speedy recovery. Later in the day, for the Xfinity Series race, Dale Earnhardt Jr. wasn't in the broadcast booth, but on the track running his second race of the year. He had another solid run and finished fifth. I thought his day was worth mentioning just because I know his longtime fans would appreciate his communication over the team radio. Early on, Junior made it clear that his spotter and crew chief needed to clear up their communication over the team radio as they were occasionally walking over one another and he wasn't receiving the messages. However, later in the race, Earnhardt, who was known to get fiery during his racing days, did just that and let his team know that he wasn't happy. I'm just trying to get into a blanking rhythm here. There is a lot of blanking talking going on right now. I hit the wall like a mother blank the last couple of laps. Let me concentrate. I'm sure Earnhardt fans that hear that are smiling, thinking back to the good old days. Interestingly, during Sunday's cup race, there was more contentious communication between drivers and crew chiefs. The first example came from a familiar source, Martin Truex Jr. and James Small. Truex, as I've talked about here on the channel, has struggled mightily in the playoffs. Outside of a top 10 finish last week at Las Vegas, the Joe Gibbs Racing driver hasn't had a single finish inside the top 15. Sunday in Miami was no different, as he finished 34th after his car suffered mechanical failure. That failure was the final straw to a bad day that included multiple slow pit stops. Moments after the second one, the 43-year-old driver couldn't hold back his growing frustration. Good joke. Clear pit road. Ain't doing this no more. What's intriguing is Truex's frustration wasn't even the top story from Pit Road. That came from Kyle Larson. And no, I'm not talking about him blasting the sand-filled barrels, protecting the pit road wall. I'm actually talking about what happened earlier in the race at the close of stage two, when his car handling faded and he blamed it on the hard racing with the number 99 of Daniel Suarez. His crew chief, Cliff Daniels, disagreed and things got contentious. Take a listen. I'm fine, I just... Me amigo race the of us. Well, you had him clear the first time, then you let him go again, so I don't know that I agree with all that, and then we just hurt our tires, so do you want me to work on the car or no? Um, I don't know. I'm not really sure. I'm still tight up top, and I didn't honestly feel that bad around the middle bottom. I just ran hard for four or five laps and never came back. You tell me. Tell me if you want something with the car. I said I don't know. I think we just need to calm down and regroup. It was an eye-opening exchange between the pair, especially when you consider how Daniels is often the cheerleader for Larson, including his memorable motivational speech to his driver last year in the Coca-Cola 600. 
And finally, my last news item is on the GOAT, Michael Jordan. I don't know if you've been paying attention, but as far as I can tell, his airness has been in attendance at every race in the postseason, supporting his 2311 drivers. I figured after Bubba Wallace was eliminated, Jordan might not show up, but that's not been the case at all. He was there this weekend, even to Wallace's surprise, who apparently thought he had gone fishing and has been seen on pit road after each race talking with both Wallace and Tyler Reddick. I think NASCAR fans can sometimes lose sight of how this sport impacts people's lives. Clearly it affected Jordan when he was attending those races with his father as a young child. Now he's a team owner, but more importantly, he's not just a team owner, but a present team owner. He's been at numerous races this year. I think it's safe to assume he's been to more races than Pitbull, who was there on Sunday, and other well-known owners like Roger Penske. You know with all of his business ventures, he's a busy guy. He doesn't have to be there, but he is. He obviously makes NASCAR a priority in his schedule, and that's a great thing to see. And while his presence might not make headlines, you can be sure those who are in attendance are in awe and impacted by seeing him. And it undoubtedly piques the curiosity of those who see photos of him at races on social media. Having one of the most recognizable athletes in the world at your event is great exposure. And again, it shows you how passionate he is for the sport, a passion we all share. I'm curious to hear what you think about Jordan's presence at so many races this season. And let me know your thoughts about the Kyle Larson and Martin Truex radio communications over the weekend. Do you think Truex is in trouble? Will that contentious moment linger between Larson and Daniels? And for those Dell Jr. fans, did his profanity-laced tirade bring back fond memories? That's all for today, guys. Thanks as always for checking out the latest video and have a great rest of your day.